Right, hello boys and girls. Sync that up. Hello, you alright? I've just pulled over actually because um had a bit of an issue with the bike. I'm just recording my 1000 mile review. Not sure if you can see that, but I've done 1152 miles. Oh, one second. Oh yeah. Oh, you can hear me? Yeah. Cool. Alright, I love you. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> so basically what happened was um, I had this really really bad knocking noise, um, ticking noise coming from the top of the, the cylinder. Uh, top of the cylinder had somewhere around here, which sounds like engine knock and I've had it before but this is the worst I've had it. Um, and I could hear it through my headphones, sorry through my earplugs, and through the music that's playing through Mercado. And all of a sudden the bike started to feel really really uh, fucking hell, he's absolutely flying. Um, I could feel it through the and the engine felt very very luggy and it, I basically just pulled in it did not feel good at all. Which kind of ruins this video to be honest with you because I was about to sit and sing this thing's praises but hopefully it's nothing bad. I did mention it when I got it for its first service but um, see if we can hear it. I can still kind of hear it and I can feel it through the handlebars. It feels like the... I don't know, it feels like... It feels like the firing order's off. I don't know why, it just feels like... You can feel this weird odd vibration come from somewhere that has never been there before. It's such a surreal, not very nice feeling. I'm just going to pull this back a little bit. Is that alright? Hello, you are right. Boom. Right, so we're going to crack on with this video because it's fucking warm today. Air temp is 35 degrees apparently according to that, which is not, it's probably because the uh, the bike's been warm. Right, so let's have it. My God. I mean, it, when it's up, even here at 6,000, it can still feel there's a really weird vibration going on there, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't know. Something doesn't feel right with this thing, man. Anyway, we're going to crack on. So, hello there, guys. How's it going? So today, I've just just passed my 1,000 mile on this thing. Uh, I could definitely feel it through the handlebar. There's like a buzz there that wasn't, wasn't there before. Oh, can I get a wheelie? Yeah, yes, I can. Hello. Ugh. Fuck me! It's just the front end just skipping the floor there. Anyway, right. So we're going to talk about this this here bike today and what I think about it. The first thousand miles that I've had, have they been good? <laughs> How am I finding it compared to the Super Duke and the, the Speed Triple that I had? Oh fuck! Oh, that was glass. So how am I finding this bike? Uh, well, long story short, if you don't want to stick around, I love this bike. I absolutely love this thing. It is by far the best bike that I've had in, uh, I don't know, man, like four years. In fact, do you know what? It's probably the best bike I've had since the MT-09. And I had to sell the MT-09. Uh, I moved house at the time and I needed something a little bit sort of uh, better for for motorway miles. So I ended up getting a Ninja 1000 SX, which I sold very, you know, within six months. And I've kind of, every six months, I've either had problems with bikes or uh, I've moved over to something else because it didn't really suit me very well. And that's the thing about test rides is, you know, you can't have them for a month. So, they, you know, they don't really give you a full example of what your uh, like day-to-day -day stuff is gonna actually be like hello hello hey, yeah sorry even at low really low rpms like that I can feel like this weird through the handlebars doesn't feel right I am on a mode I've not really been doing too much in terms of going haywire on this thing at all I've been pretty sensible to be honest because I've only got a little bit of petrol to get me home so I'm not joking this thing it really is <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this thing is an absolute riot sometimes. You get this thing beyond 5,000 RPM and it speaks for its fucking self. It is absolutely unbelievable. Oh fucking hell, fuck me. Fuck me, man. Now, one of the main things I want to talk about in this video is... The fact that 160 horsepower, 165 horsepower, whatever this is, how numbers don't really equate to how things feel and the character of the bike and all that kind of shit, because it really, really doesn't. You know, like, 
I've been on a lot of bikes and I've been on 180 horsepower bikes with 140 newton meters of torque. I've been on a very, very, been on, I put it, I've been on a lot of quick bikes, put it that way. And this thing scares me. This thing scares me more than the Super Duke. The Super Duke was a weapon, that thing was awesome. But this thing, for some reason, even though it's lower down on horsepower, and at the crank, especially with the way that this is mapped from the factory, you're only probably looking 140, but the way it makes its power because of the cross plane and the fact that it's an inline four, this thing smacks you in the fucking face. It is so quick, or it feels so quick. It's weird, it really is, because considering this thing is only throwing out 145 horsepower at the rear wheel at the minute, um, you know, I am getting a pipe that's on the way. I am going to get it remapped at some point um, to go with the pipe. Um, and then I'm probably going to go and get it sort of dyno run at P3 or somewhere local to me so I can see what we're making. It's going to be a Woolwich tune, but this thing, like, is going to be fucking mental if I get it, if I get it mapped. That being said, I've said, like I said before, that is at 5,000 and above. Anything below 5,000, it's not great, but it's not bad either. Now, the, the reason why that is, is because, because of, fuck me, that's some bright ass sun, holy shit. Because of emissions and Euro emissions laws and stuff, it hampers bikes. Uh, it really, really fucking rest restricts them, and they have to do it in order to get through emissions. Now, that's usually below 5,000 or around the 5,000 mark and below. And things at the lower end of the RPM are never very good with these types of bikes, especially the, the litre bikes or the 1000cc plus. If they're okay with the with the smaller bikes like the 765s and stuff that I've had, they've actually been pretty good to be honest with you. The 1000cc's, it's then not great. You know, for commuting and everyday use and 30 mile an hour and third gear, fourth gear, that kind of thing, they're never very good. That is just solely because of the emission stuff that, we, that these have to be put through these days. And the fact that they're so lean. But not only are they so lean, but they've also got restrictions within the ECU themselves. Uh, like throttle mapping and all that kind of stuff. It's very, very hampered at low RPMs. Which is a massive shame because then you've got to obviously go and pay money to get what the bike that you're meant to be paying for. And then on top of that, you know, you're looking at um, voiding warranties and all that kind of stuff as well. It's just a bit of a nightmare, to be honest with you. The, the bike they say you get on paper is never the bike you're gonna get and you just have to accept that. You see all these people at the fancy demo runs, you know, doing doing first rise and reviews on like bikes and saying, oh God, these are amazing. And in actual fact, living with them, there are niggles and problems or there are problems that they don't talk about because that would uh, ruin their status. But the engine on this thing, like it's just stock, is unreal. It's such a good engine. The 165 horsepower figure, it does not feel like that. It feels so fucking punchy. The mid-range, past 6,000 to um, to 11, or whatever it revs out to, 12,000. It's so good. It's such a good engine. I'm surp I don't know why I've never tried one of these before, but my God, man. the sound as well the sound of this is one of the the best sounding bikes i've ever listened to in my fucking life i don't care this and the v4 i was gonna go for the tuono i'm not gonna lie but the tuono being a more race spec bike and it was more expensive i managed to get this in tech black uh, for 2400 pounds i think it was from Mot motorcycles uh, down south they did me delivery they did all sorts for 12 and a bit grand this thing is a fucking bargain and i don't say that lightly because i am a very poor person <laughs> but considering how much that bikes are these days you know how expensive that they are and you know the tuonos are 15 16 grand oh fuck the tuonos are 15 16 grand and then you've got you know the speed triples again which are nearly 16 and you've got the, uh, the uh, super duke which is 16 and a bit and then you've got uh what else have you got the street fighter that's like 20 grand fuck that v4 um and then you've got this and like the suzuki suzuki is just boring the lcd screen it can't be bothered i've always been i've had a reliable time with the yammies so i went for a yam because i'm sick of bikes breaking on me and i've never ever had a problem with a yammy before touch wood until today well until this weird ticking issue that we were talking about before. Fucking, oh my God, that wheelie. Fucking hell, man. It's, oh. Oh man, it's such a good engine. For, for reference, by the way, the pipe on this is very, very quiet. Um, in my V5 logbook, it says it's 74, 75 decibels at idle. 
Now the legal limit I think is either 89 or 85 or 82, I can't remember. But the Super Duke was much louder than this with the stock exhaust. The street tri uh, speed triple and the street triple coincidentally was the same. Oh, listen to that. Oh, oh get inside me, man. Ergonomics, very good. Now, I have quite bad spinal problems and I've had to go for the comfort seat. Um, the comfort seat on this is pretty good, it's not the best thing in the world, but if you haven't got spinal problems like I have and other injuries, it should be fine for you. If you ask anyone that's got these bikes, the stock seats are absolute fucking garbage, they are. They're not very nice at all, they're so, they're so hard. Um, and my, and Kira, put Kira on the back and she ended up being an absolute agony uh, in a fanny, <laughs> which isn't nice, but... Uh, so I ended up getting this thing and the, the passenger seat is like that thick now compared to that thick. And then, uh, e even then, you still get pain after a while, but it helps prolong the pain. Uh, the, well, the point in which pain kicks in, if that makes any sense. The, the peg height angle is pretty good. You're pretty upright compared to the Super Duke. Super Duke was fairly lent over. This is a lot more upright. It felt weird getting on one because the Super Duke was very flat, whereas this has got the cockpit out the front and a bit longer. Um, which is good for me because the Super Duke's dashboard was on the handlebars so I was having to look down at the handlebars every time which is kind of annoying the Super Duke was a lot more lent forward this is a lot more relaxed position um, even for me though um, it does get quite painful after a while and I think that's because of how wide the tank is now my spinal problems go down my leg and into my knees and all down the left side of my body which is why again I've changed my bars because my ribs cramp up with normal bars I don't know why so I've had to change them to this one because yeah disabilities and shit Nice, look at that thing. Fucking Mitchell Largo. Oof, beautiful. The the leg angle, the peg angle is a bit strange actually because you sat bolt upright, but the, the pegs are fairly racy, so the the I don't know where are they now. They're, they're just sat behind my hip hip line uh, down down my hips. Which is a bit weird, but it's quite sporty, but again like the width of the tank and how wide it is because it's an inline four and the, the tank is I actually really like the how wide the tank is, it's just it just hurts me quite a lot. Gives you a lot to grip onto. Um, but that and, the, and the, the angle sets my hip off, my, my back, my spine, my hip, my knee and after about, I don't know, I could probably get an hour out of this and I'm in quite a lot of pain before I need to put my uh, put my feet down. What the hell is this? The fuck? There's a diver... what? I'm very confused. This wasn't like this before. Hey, the benefits of having a motorbike. Look at this. Oh, fuck. <laughs> nice. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, low down. Hit six or seven, and fuck me. The thing just comes up, it just comes alive. Fucking hell. And it sounds so fucking good, man. Fuck, what's that? Oh, it's a dead badger. Or, I don't know what that was, but fuck. Look at that. Really? Really? Fucking hell. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, man. I've never had a bike feel like this before. It's so good. I've had every configuration known to man, and this thing is just fucking insane. You know, the stats do not give this thing justice at all. Not at all. Getting back to what I was talking about. Ergonomics are great for, ever, for anyone that's normal and don't have pay, uh, you know, normal pains and stuff. It would be, I'm sure it would be, would be fine. And very, very, very comfortable, especially with the comfort seat. Oh, that's something that happens a lot. Oh, I hate that feeling. Having to put it into gear after a false neutral. I hate that feeling. The dashboard and, and uh, the features on that are pretty good. They're very concise, very clear. Everyone moans about the scroll wheel, but I kind of don't mind it at all. Yeah, the dashboard's great. It gives you everything. The fuel bar's a bit annoying because it goes from like full to half to quarter to empty. And the uh, as usual with all these newer bikes these days, they're so conservative with the fuel. You can get so much more than the than the fuel trip's telling you. I could probably get I could get like 150 mile out of this thing. I'm getting about 40 mile a gallon, even riding like this. 40 mile a gallon. You know, when I'm filling up, I think I've managed to get 145 mile out of a tank, and I filled up 15 liters, UK liters, obviously. It's done it again. 
and I'm going into fucking gear properly. So really good mileage on it, you get 150, uh, 150 mile out of the tank quite easily. We're ready for a jump here boys. Yeah, <laughs> they could switch gears. You know, the switch gear's okay, it could have a bit of, you know, it could be a little bit slimmer. There could be some functions on it that could be changed, like changing the modes on the fly, like you can with a lot of other bikes these days. And then obviously, uh, there are certain buttons on it, like these two that go up and down, that change the mode up and down, that are just randomly big and weird and bulky. And, and they should be, in, they should find different ways to lay out the buttons. And, you know, the, the flash, the high beams, like here, instead of the flasher at the back, which cycles through the, the, the screen, which is a little bit weird, but you get used to it. And it's the way the Japanese do things sometimes. The brakes are absolute garbage. I can still feel that weird feeling through the fucking bike, you know, it's not nice at all. The quick shift is absolutely amazing. It is one of the highlights of this bike in my opinion. It's 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 up there with the What the fuck are we doing? Come on, dickheads! Fuck me! Quickshifter is up there with the speed triples. When it works past the 5,000, again because of the um, emission stuff, it is absolutely butter. You don't feel it, and it sounds so good with how good that engine sounds. But the brakes are shit. I've upgraded them with um, BBC brake pads. Let's do it into neutral again. I hate doing that. Fucking you know, hell, it can be very temperamental. I do have the Race Talks gear support on here, but it can still be very temperamental. Yeah, it lower RPMs. Other times it's great, but then other times it can be just just horrible. It really is not good. And once I get the servo off, once I be able to get the pipe, you know, pipe on here and then unrestrict it, um, and then get the ECU flash and stuff. Hopefully that will change. It's slow speeds, you know, low RPM, slow speeds, this thing can be a bit twitchy. That was one of the complaints with the older models. I've never ridden the older model, by the way. It can be one of the complaints with the old models. They can be quite fucking jerky. This is actually not too bad, except from when you come off the engine braking. It, it's not as bad as it used to be on the MT-09 uh, or the 07 when I got the MT-09 flashed. That was awesome. Have a look at that video from a few years back if it's, if it's there. But when you're in the corners and you're trying to be stable and you just move your, your, your hand a little bit or take the power off a little bit, especially with Kira on the back, uh, you just go flying forward. You, if I were to just come off the throttle with Kira on the back, you, she's smacking into the back of my helmet, which is not good. So yeah, the brakes, sorry, yeah. The, the brakes are absolute garbage. Um, I'm going to try getting braided hoses so I want braided hoses for it and I'm going to get a new master cylinder even though they do use a Brembo master cylinder now it doesn't really do much I want new calipers as well at some point but you know that's going to be a work in progress God, that really feels weird I don't like the way that that feels I can feel like a pulsing through the bars and it, I've never felt it before it does not feel good oh god it's done it again oh I hate doing that See it lower RPMs, it, it does that a lot, even with the race shift uh, gear support on there. Yeah, brakes are just not very good. I just think that the ABS on these Japanese bikes, that's the downfall. They're never very good ABS. The Super Dukes was a lot better, and the Triumphs were, again, were really good. For slow speed stuff, again, say if we are taking off, it basically feels really weird. It feels like the bike wants to stall on you. And it's not a very nice feeling, to be honest with you. It, you have to over-rev it in order to get it to go where you want it to go. Um, and again, that all will all be sorted out with a map, because again, that's just emission stuff. And then you've got the suspension. The suspension's pretty good on this. You know, I'm not going to lie, it is pretty good. And I was not paying £4,000, £3,500, four grand more for the for the EC2, for the Olins, for the SP model. I, I just wasn't interested in paying that much at all. You do have braided lines on there, which by the way I did try to get for this bike and try and sort of retrofit them. 450 quid, no thank you. But the suspension overall, it leans like this. You know, you, you're on your rear, that it does need a setup. And it is, the front is very stiff when you first get it. The front is overly stiff. So I took three clicks of compression out of both legs. That's, that softened it up quite a lot to the point where it was no way near as bad. But it's still very crashy, very, very bangy. You go over potholes and it jars you. You know, it, it's one of them. It's going to need a setup for my weight, which it has got, which I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to toit at some point. Going to get a setup with toit again. 
the TW suspension tech, he's been with him for years, he's really good. But I've not done my preload, I've not done my preload of front and rear, um, I've only tinkered with the front suspension, the rear really is saggy. Um, the compression's okay, but there's, the rebound's non-existent and there's no support there either, so that needs to be sorted out. Um, but otherwise, in terms of actual suspension for a, a quote-unquote budget bike, it's very good out the box it's very good and I actually bought this bike in the consideration of putting a rear shock in it at some point anyway because I knew that it's not going to be the best thing on earth and it's, it surprised me actually being quite a suspension nut myself I do like my suspension and I like tinkering and all that kind of shit and I love the the physics of it and the geometry and, and the engineering side of things I find it fascinating in terms of other problems that I've had, I've not really had anything except from when I do this, for example, if I put it in fourth gear, put my uh, put my cruise control on, it goes right. You see if it, see if it dip in there. You see it dip in there. It just it just wants to fall to the right. They've had a look at this and said there's no problem, but that to me screams alignment every time I do. It doesn't matter if I sit on the on the left hand side. I have to sit. Look how far off I have to sit in order for it to track properly. And my left ass cheek is way off the fucking bike there. It's really bad. So those are the those are the only problems really. The brakes, the emission stuff, which you can't really do much about unless you flash it, and they can't do much about because of the way that the emissions regs are set up these days for Euro 5. Comfort, but that's because of me. And then this ticking noise, the engine, that's worrying, and it, I can feel it. I can feel. I still feel it right now. Uh, this kind of stuff, you know, slow manoeuvre. Uh, around town kind of kind of stuff absolutely amazing again the brakes aren't great but again uh, it's just not much you can do about that but the main thing with this bike with its with its ride quality and stuff like the main thing I think about when I'm at slow speed is stability this thing is so stable the weight is distributed over the, uh, over the bike in such a good way that is so it, it's such a good thing for commuting it lends itself so well with commuting. You just one-handed stuff like this, you can do, but it's very difficult because it's very choppy on and on and you have to be at a steady throttle. It's a good practice for your throttle hand. And by the way, all of this has been done in A mode, if you're wondering which is the most aggressive mode. But yeah, for potting around estates and stuff like this and slow manoeuvre stuff, it's so stable. Um, but like I said, at the lower RPMs, this thing can just be, it's not very nice just because of the emission stuff. Um, it's just very, it can be very chuggy, very luggy. I can have my feet up for days on this thing, you know. Tap out. But like I said, pulling out like that and letting the clutch out, you can kind of feel it go 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 because it's very chuggy. It feels like it wants to stall, so you have to over rev. And when you're setting off quickly or something, that can be, it can be horrible, it really can. Tires on this are great. Uh, Bristol S22's never had a problem. I had them on the speed, on the Super Duke. It is, again, it's quite a stiff ride. The chassis feels pretty stiff. This is an R1 chassis after all, I guess, but I have a feeling that the suspension, tire pressures and stuff like that are involved. I have messed about with the tire pressures, but not too much considering that um, I've had Kira on the back, so I've not been able to mess around with the rear. I usually keep 36, 36 even or 34 even, but tire pressure wise, and it just very, very, very jarring, very like da -da -da over a big bump. It can be like this here. Uh, it can really agitate my injuries, which I think is leading to part of the problem as to why I can't stay on it for more than an hour or 45 minutes or whatever. I have, it seems to be quite critical here, but I am being critical, and it wouldn't be me without being critical. I'm not going to sit and tell you fucking everything's perfect because that would just be stupid. But that's been me. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. I love this bike. I can't wait to keep modding it. I can't wait to keep giving you some good content, hopefully. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'll see you very, very soon, I'm sure. And until the next time, boys and girls, sort them out. Goodbye.